Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Autumn. I make videos about magic and spirituality, living on this beautiful planet and really maximizing our capacity to be excellent, however that looks for us. And today I have a video that has been highly requested for you all, an updated spiritual witchy book recommendation video. And I have a ton of recommendations today. It's literally been two, three, four years since I have done a book recommendation. And these are some of my favorite books, ones that have made a huge impact on my life. A lot of these I keep to flip back to and refer to and Let's go ahead and dive in. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel to get more videos on all things witchy. So I've separated these books into a couple different categories. We have some overall, what I'm gonna call spirituality books that talk about either earth-based spirituality or goddess lore of some kind. And then we have a more scientific window in which we're gonna be looking at these topics. And then I have a couple of pure kind of magic books. Some of them tie into folklore, some of them tie into druidry, and they're all super fun. And all of these books I highly recommend. So we're gonna start with Wild Mercy by Murabi Star. And this book is absolutely phenomenal. If you're a female identifying mystic, this book will speak directly to your heart and your soul. It talks about the feminine perspective of mysticism and interacting with the world from a feminine heart. And it's just, it's honey to the soul. If you are someone who craves more of a cyclical way of existing, but you don't really know where to start, if you're curious about goddess lore and different feminine mystic archetypes, this book is incredible. Also, if you're someone who craves to find spirituality in the mundane, you want to fall in love with drinking your cup of coffee as your spiritual practice, this book is incredible. I highly recommend it. This is one I'll probably go back to and read and read again. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned this, but I'll have a link to all of these books in the show notes if you're curious about looking into them. Next, I have two books by the same author, and I'll talk about them both separately, but I'm sure you've heard of Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer, and talk about honey to the soul. Robin's writing is poetry, and she has this phenomenal way of sewing together the world of spirituality, specifically Native American spiritual teachings with the Monday current Western world. And, oh my God, it's, it's the most brilliant marriage of science and spiritual teachings. And it just hits a chord. I think so many of us have lost touch with our native roots. We all are native to this earth. We all come from a native spirituality, specifically witchery or Celtic mysticism, druidry, these spiritual practices have been lost for a lot of white people. And we get to kind of learn from Robin in these books, how we can remember, put back together the sacred practices of our own ancestors. And she talks about that through her own journey and through her own lens and it's phenomenal. Anything that you could possibly want to learn from um, making your own maple syrup to mucking upon you're gonna find the sweetest antidotes from robin's personal life and her spiritual teachings in this book it'll make you cry it's so good and this was the book she wrote before braiding sweetgrass it's called gathering moss and i geeked out on this book if you like science like i do she talks about um the scientific discoverings of moss it's kind of like the secret life of moss and again ties them to her own life ties them into her mundane day-to-day -day, and it just opens up this portal into magic the magic that is life i truly believe that this existence is the magic this is where all the magic is this is what magic is made of our own personal lives and robin captures that in these books in her writing so i definitely recommend both of these if you're less of an if you're more of a nerd gathering moss is incredible if you're curious about moss if you're curious about um 
how life grows gathering moss if you are wanting to just deepen into your own intuitive wisdom and begin to learn from the indigenous american spiritual spirituality and from the point of view of a very learned person and that's what's so cool about robin is she sees how what she has learned through her spiritual practices and what science is teaching she sees where they merge and she talks about it and highlights it so both of these are excellent reads so if you've read women who run with wolves which i'm sure you've at least heard of it this book the Faithful Gardener is also by Clarissa Pinkola Estes, the author of Women Who Runs With Wolves, Wolves, and it is phenomenal. I read this in probably like two hours, this whole entire book. It's a story, and it's a story within a story, and it will capture your heart. I love stories. I love learning through stories, which is why I loved both or all three of these books so much is because they are stories as much as their teachings and practices there is a mysticism and a myth that weaves them all together and the faithful gardener is that um it will nurture your heart if you are somewhere in your life where you're experiencing a phoenix moment maybe you're face to face with death in some capacity this book is it this was actually sent to me a couple years ago by um, one of my dear previous clients, and I couldn't be more grateful to have gotten to read it and reread it. This is one, like if you're going camping and you just want a story to read, bring this. Um, but of course, how Clarissa works is she tells these stories, but there's always a deeper spiritual meaning within them. And The Faithful Gardener is no exception. Okay, my next book recommendation is my personal kind of Bible, and this is the Flower Essence Repertoire. And this is a textbook. I mean, it is a textbook. And it talks about flower essences, and it's a comprehensive guide. And you can see I've annotated this, I come back to it and read it and reference it in my own personal work when I work with women one-on-one, -on -one, when I'm prescribing flower essences, when I'm going to make flower essences, I come back to this book and just tune in. It's a textbook. But it's so incredible because it talks about spirituality and it talks about science and it talks about that merging because it's necessary to understand that in order to understand how flower essences work as a medicine. So if you are more interested in homeopathic remedies in herbalism in energetic medicine in feng shui or reiki or massage therapy anything of this sort flower essences are an incredible tool to know about it's the medicine of all medicines i think it's energetic it's emotional it works with the internal world with the soul so this book is essential it's essential to your apothecary to your personal repertoire um, I can't recommend it enough and it's one like I said that I tune into probably once a month I come back I reread I make more notes I reference it in my work it is crucial and it also is cool because it asks you to kind of give your own insight into this world so if you're nerding out on flower essences like I am you must read this also if you are a science water nerd, if you're curious about that world where science and water are beginning to merge and kind of create a new paradigm, a new outlook on reality, this will be a really cool reference for you to have as well. All right, and also kind of in the realm of science, we have a Druid's Herbal by Ellen Everett Hopman um, for the Sacred Earth Year. I absolutely adore all of Ellen Everett Hopman's work. She also wrote a book called Priestess of the Forest, which is one of my absolute favorite books. I I lost it or someone took it a while back and I never got it, but that's an incredible read. I think I mentioned it in my first um, book recommendations video, but this is really cool because she talks about herbs from the point of view of the Druids. And if you don't know who the Druids are, I'm gonna make a video talking about this really soon but they are a subsect of Celtic natives, basically. And they had a lot of wisdom and a lot of deep spiritual practices that kept them connected to the earth, very much like Native Americans, um, indigenous people. 
but completely different because the climate was different, the herbs were different, the plants were different, the language is different. But this book will give you an outline of how you can work with herbs based on the will of the year and the different Sabbaths that fall on the will of the year. And if you're not sure what that is, you should check out my last video I made talking about the will of the year. But this book is incredible. It's also one of those books that you probably won't read through right away, but you'll go back to and you'll be like, okay, it's Beltane's coming up. You know, what are the herbs for Beltane? What grows in my area? What is the magical uses of those herbs? It's kind of an encyclopedia of magical herbs through the lens of Druidry. All right, this is my absolute favorite one right now, at least, because I'm reading it right now and I'm totally geeking out. It is Mermaid Magic by Lucy Cavendish and Serene Connolly. And this book is everything of my witchy dreams. I love it because they talk about science, they talk about the tides, they talk about the different energies of the different oceans, and there's this realist perspective that's also deeply, deeply interwoven with the mysticism and the magic and the unseen and the mermaid energy and the mermaid archetype. So it's about water, it's about healing, it's about um, the mysticism of the mermaid archetype, and it's also an invitation into understanding your own cycle and cyclical nature. I am obsessed with this book. I'm reading it really quickly. I'm almost done, but I know it's also one that I'll come back to because water magic is kind of resurfacing in the world, and I think that's incredibly exciting because water is life, right? It's the element that connects everything. And like I said in my last video, I'm going to make a video talking about this really soon because it's incredibly important. Water magic, water as an element, but mermaid magic is such a good read. I definitely recommend it. Check out the link in the show notes. Buy it right now. You will not regret it. If you're a witch, if you have a magical practice, this is a must read in my opinion. Okay, my last two books are kind of random, but they're both really important for different reasons. One, we have Creating Money, Attracting Abundance by uh, Sonia Roman and Duane Packer. It's an incredible book about energetics and how to magnetize, which is a manifest manifestation technique. This is also a book that I've read multiple times. I come back to, I use it like an oracle sometimes and flip open to a random page. All my experiences are opportunities to gain more power, clarity, and vision. That's a really good one. So yeah, I'll use it like that as a oracle, open to it, see what page I turn to, see what information's there. Um, and it also just continues to remind me how powerful we are as humans, how energetic this world really is, and how we can call into our lives whatever we want and whatever we need. So creating money, this is a another must have. I love the spiral illustration on here, but it's going to bring you back into your power time and time again, remind you that you can create the reality you want. Last and certainly not least, we have Dear Lover by David Dieta. And some people pronounce his name differently. I'm not sure the exact pronunciation. I'm sorry, but this is an incredible book. It's called <laughs> Dear Lover, A Woman's Guide to Men, Sex, and Love's Deepest Bliss. And I can see why this book could be controversial. It's very polarized in the way it talks about feminine essence and masculine ex essence. And it uses words like women and men. But it is so incredible if you do identify as a straight woman and you are wanting to call in a lover that can meet you in deep love that can meet you in untamable romance that you crave and desire and it's it's beautifully written it's poetry and intellect and it's a phenomenal read it's one of those books that you might want to read multiple times i definitely have um and it really just asks you to open your heart to be soft and tender and open and to open and to keep opening and where you can go, where you and your lover can go when you open past your perceived limitations and your hurts and your pains and your stories. So it's a deeply spiritual book and it's super sexy. It's a great read. It's one that is like kind of erotic, but also very informational. And I love, love, love that. 
I hope you've enjoyed this book recommendation video. All of these books are ones that I have read. A lot of them are ones I've read multiple times. And I'm so happy that I got to share them with you all today. If you've read any of these, let me know. Please let me know in the comments which ones you feel most curious about. I can't wait to hear what you think. I love you all so much. I'll see you in my next video. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content. And I'll see you all very soon.